I love Jesus. <laughs> Jesus was my best friend and my hero. <laughs> he was the son of God and a man. Jesus loved me back, too. He helped me with my homework. He blessed me with scholarships. <laughs> and he'd forgive my sins. Let's see. Fighting with my brother and um, stealing cookies when mom said no and, and letting impure thoughts pollute my soul. I almost told a lie. <laughs> By the time I was in second grade, I had trained myself to never, ever touch myself down there where the bad sins live because I was going to heaven and nothing, no one was going to get in my way. <laughs> I knew I was privileged that I had been blessed with a religious vocation by God. I was one of Jesus' sacred brides, a nun. I would spend the rest of my days <coughs> in black, plain robes, glorifying God and making the world a better place through teaching and prayer. By keeping the near occasions of sin to an absolute minimum in the convent, I could assure myself lots of plenary indulgences and spiritual bouquets, enough to guarantee me a big fat place in heaven, right up there rubbing elbows with Jesus and Mary, sharing Cheetos and peanut butter sandwich with Jehovah and the Holy Dove. During recess, when the other kids were out um, jumping rope and playing kickball, I went to church for bonus points. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would position myself in a beam of light coming through the stained glass windows and um, so I could feel the rainbow love coming from God directly to me. First off, I would imagine how pretty I was going to look in my habit and my veil. <laughs> then, then I would start crying for how all our sins stabbed Jesus in his sacred heart. And I would weep for the starving kids in China and, and the pagan babies in Africa. And I would... <gasps> I would sob for the rise of the evil fist of global communism. <laughs> um, uh, sometimes, oh, Easter, Easter, when Easter week rolled around, the night before Good Friday, I would set my clock for midnight. I was determined to keep vigil with Jesus for the next three hours in the Garden of Gethsemane while he was sweating blood and begging God the Father to spare him the nightmare of Golgotha. <laughs> Jesus may have been deserted by his flaky apostles, but he could count on me. <laughs> there I was on my knees in front of the TV set. <laughs> the TV set wasn't on. It was just the holiest place in our living room. <laughs> it's because that's where we put the Christmas manger with the ceramic, uh, uh, the ceramic kings and shepherds and angels and the baby Jesus with the chip foot. <laughs> For the next three hours, I would focus all of my 
imagination on trying to feel Jesus' pain. The sting of the lash on his back, the bloody gore of the crown of thorns. But I have to confess, I was kind of mad I couldn't be a priest. I wanted to conduct the sacred ceremonies and forgive sins. I wanted to change the white bread into the body of Jesus. But because I was only a stinky girl, a daughter of Eve and responsible for all the sin and suffering in the world, I could never be a priest. You know, it wasn't fair, it wasn't right. But I gritted my teeth and learned to accept the will of God. I was going to heaven and no one was going to get in my way. <laughs>